In this video, we'll make our first sound using the Web Audio API's audio context. I'll start by typing out some code just to show how quickly we can generate a tone, and then we'll dive in further to understand how it's working. So we've already created an instance of audio context in this first line here, and we assigned it to a variable named CTX for context. And being that context is now an object built off of the audio context constructor, we have access to all the various properties and methods from the Web Audio API. Now, there are various ways to work with sound sources, but here we'll invoke the create oscillator method, available on the context object, and assign it to a variable, which we'll call OSC, short for oscillator. If you've ever used an analog synthesizer before, you're probably already familiar with oscillators, which are basically voltage shapers, which generate sound from electricity. For our purposes, you can simply think of the oscillator as the source of the sound that we're creating. Now, we'll take that oscillator that we just created and use the connect method to connect it to your speakers. So when we call this connect method, we want to pass it the audio context destination property, like so. You can sort of think of what we've done so far as though you've gone out and bought a synthesizer and hooked it up to your speakers. Of course, just hooking up your synth to your speakers won't produce a sound though until something actually triggers that sound, something like playing a key on the keyboard. So we'll do that in a second, but before we do that, Make sure that you have your speakers set at a reasonable volume level, so you don't blow your ears out. Now, we can trigger this oscillator in our code by using the start method on our oscillator and invoking it. Before I save my file though, which will start the sound, I'm first going to set up a JavaScript set timeout to stop the oscillator running after two seconds. That two seconds will be represented here by 2,000 or 2,000 milliseconds. And as you can see here, we have a stop method also available on the oscillator. And that'll be used to stop the sound. Now if I go ahead and save the file, we should hear a two second tone come out of our speakers. So let's go ahead now and take a bit more of an in-depth look at what we've done so far. So the audio context is the overarching context within which we get access to the various features of the Web Audio API. And we'll generally use a single instance of this audio context for an application. The audio context can be referred to as a graph of audio nodes. And these nodes can be things like the oscillator we just created in order to generate a sound. This type of node would be called a source node but the nodes can also be things that modify sounds in various ways. And some of these sound modification objects are things like filters and reverbs and compression. Now, I'm using the term object because these nodes are actually objects. Let's go back to our code and create a couple of different nodes and log them out to the console to see what we get. But first, let's take a look at the oscillator that we created before. And here we see it in the console we get an oscillator node, which is an object with various properties here like frequency and type and so on. Now let's go and create a different node. This time let's create a gain node. So we'll say var gain equals context dot create gain. And then we'll console dot log out gain and take a look at that. And here we see we get a gain node object with its various unique properties. Now when we create a node, like an oscillator, we need to use the connect function to route it somewhere. And that somewhere can be either directly to the destination, like your computer speakers, or it can be another node, which could be used to modify the sound before it gets to the final destination. You can think of the connect method as sort of being like the glue or the virtual patch cable that connects the nodes together. It provides the flow between the various nodes on route to the destination. 
The cool thing is that the node components are modular, so any node can be connected to any other node. And this is referred to as modular routing. Finally, when we refer to destination, we're talking about the physical output of your audio system. And that could be your computer's inbuilt speakers, or maybe you have an audio interface connected to some external speakers, for example. Wherever your computer's audio output is set up to go to is what the destination will be. So this is a way that we get all the way from the sound source to the final sound output.